Hello people! I'm going to try something new with this video and make a commentary of one of my latest runs. During the commentary I'll use various graphics such as map overviews or arrows to highlight interesting stuff, so you'll hopefully have a chance to know what I'm talking about. I've never done a commentary before, and it took quite a while to make, so if you want more stuff like this, then please like this video and add a comment below. Now, there's not a lot happening at the beginning of the run, so I'll use the time to highlight a slight build change instead. In my previous monk runs, I've used the inner storm rune for sweeping wind, and that has been changed to firestorm. My hope is that the increased radius will make it easier to break nearby doors later on in the run, um, which right now is a bigger problem for me than getting more spirit. Uh, it's worth mentioning though that I still haven't found a monk build, which I think is perfect, so I might change it again in the future. Got the Leah skip, which means she appeared instantly at the gates. Not quite sure how to do that reliably though. When you drop down into the first level of the cathedral, the background will sometimes reveal where the exit is, and this black background means that the exit is just around the corner. It is not ready yet. Once I get to the Defile Crypts, I need to use an audio cue to find the right crypt, but I'm turning the music off already at this point since there's nothing else to do. I prefer to play with the background music turned on though, so I'll turn it on again after finding the crown. The audio cue I mentioned is something that sounds like grumbling to me, um, which the right crypt doesn't have, so I'll stop just at the entrance to the crypt to listen to the background noises. And that's the right crypt in the first attempt, so that's a very solid start for this run. One of the interesting things about speedrunning Monk in the New Game Plus is that it's way faster than all the other classes, but it unfortunately also means that weird glitches happen easily. For instance, the Templar, who we will find in just a moment, will not always follow you to the chest after you save him, and that's why I have a sudden pause right here. If I pause at that exact point, I haven't had any problems with him not following me. Coming up is the Skeleton King battle, and I'm going to do a small trick where the gates close during the cutscene, which will save you a couple of seconds. The way I do it is to click three times at the top of the screen, and that's usually it. <laughs> there might be other ways of doing it, but that's what works for me. The trick seems to fail more often for classes with more movement speed, um, don't know why, uh, but the monk build focuses on attack speed, so that's not a problem here. And here's the trick. One, two, three clicks. And got it. The gates are closed and the skeletons appear immediately. I'm breaking a lot of jars here and it has absolutely nothing to do with the speedrun. I'm just trying to entertain myself while I wait for the skeleton king to get out of his seat. The next area is Fields of Misery, where I have to find the Kasradin, and that one can only be found in four specific locations, and I'm very lucky to get it in the first location right here. Yeah. 
When you're speedrunning as Monk, it's very easy to softlock in Casper Den, and if that happens, you end up waiting for enemies to pop out of the ground uh, while nothing happens, so the delay on that last sealot scared me a bit. I must wait to use that ability. You then. Thieves watching. Release. After saving the scoundrel and his betrothed, you can save a couple of seconds if you can get him to appear immediately next to the waypoint. And I've experimented a bit with waiting a brief moment after passing the gates, but I still failed the trick this time, so yeah, I probably need to find a better method. I must wait to use that ability. Right now I need to find and place that two beacons and I want you to pay attention when I place the first beacon uh, as I'm accidentally doing a small skip. Uh, if you pay attention to the quest objective you can see that it updates while I'm on the stairs right here and that's a skip that can save about one second. Uh, usually you can't move to the second pedestal until the first beacon has been placed, but the skip is that if you quickly cast a skill at almost the same as, uh, time as you interact with the pedestal, you can move anyway. And I never bothered to do the skip as you might lose more time if you fail the trick, but for some reason my movement doesn't get locked this time around. Um, I didn't do anything, and I've seen it happen as Demon Hunter as well, so it's plausible that there is an easier way to do the trick. The next big map is the caverns of uh, Spider Cavern. Sorry, I can't pronounce that. Um, the map pattern is uh, very obvious, but you might still end up going through most of the dungeon if you're bad at guessing which way to go. So I'll add a small concept graphic as I go through the dungeon, um, so you can keep track of how good or bad I am at guessing the right way. Ability is not yet recharged. Start of the dungeon, two possible paths. Stairs found in first attempt. First check is the dead end. It is not ready yet. And second check is the right way forward. This was okay, Schluck. I don't have a lot of damage in this build, so I'm always relieved when I manage to kill this boss in the first cycle. It's not often that I fail that fight, but it does happen sometimes. If you don't know a lot about the maps, it may seem very random why I might go in one direction and then suddenly turn around for no reason, like here. But that's because I know there's a limited number of ways most maps can be generated, so I know that that would have been a dead end after just taking this quick peek. Looking at it now, I would actually say that I made a tiny mistake, um, as I should have recognized the tile faster, so the check was never necessary in the first place. If there's a closed door in a wall, you can't jump over it. There's an example of that right here where I need to go around the wall and break the door before I can get to the last prisoner. Just for fun, let's take a look at the most common map pattern with the next map, which is a loop. So I'll say this time when I enter and exit the loop. I'm in the loop. And I'm out of the loop. So what happened there was that I recognized the freeway and four-way tile needed to create the loop and then I knew that the right way was either to the left or downwards. If I had turned right, I would have ended up close to the entrance instead and lost several seconds. 
uh, which is why it's such a big help when you know how to spot a loop during a run. The slight backtrack I had into the waypoint, by the way, was me assuming that the exit was more likely to be to the left than downwards, but, well, that was a bad guess. During a speedrun, you're guaranteed to go through at least 15 to 20 maps uh, with a loop, so it pays off to know that pattern. The beginning of Act 2 can be a bit scary because of the Enchantress. She is supposed to remove an illusion after talking to her, but sometimes she gets stuck for 5 to 10 seconds. I've tried different methods to avoid this, but I haven't found anything yet where I'm guaranteed not to get stuck. Um, the method I'm using in this run is to cancel the conversation with the escape key, uh, and it works this time, but <laughs> I've sadly seen it fail too, just not very often. My usual method to stop NPCs from talking is to scroll. Uh, that's a shortcut to close all open windows, and I found that one to my scroll wheel, so that's why. It is not ready yet. That ability is not yet recharged. Whoops! <laughs> it didn't click properly. I must wait. It's not a common for me to lose something between 2 to 10 seconds during an entire run for being bad at clicking on stuff. It's a bit sad. Ability is not yet recharged. It is not ready yet. After we've killed Magda, we need to rescue Leah from the Emperor, uh, and there's a soft lock there that I need to be very careful not to trigger. Uh, if you leave the palace with the Emperor too quickly, there's a risk of soft locking. And this is a great run, so I'm going to be extra careful by taking a small break both before and after leaving the palace to ensure that I don't soft lock on the summoning constructs. No soft lock this time. There's another one coming up though, and this time I'm not careful. I'll point it out and then I'll explain afterwards. And that was the risky part. There's a very brief moment before the cutscene starts where you can kill some or all of the enemies, and if you do it correctly, you can almost immediately talk to Adria and save some seconds. However, if you're unlucky, you risk soft-locking the game to such a degree where you have to kill the game process to exit. Uh, the screen just goes black and there's nothing you can do, so I think that's the worst soft-lock in the game. Dalgoraces is another map where we know exactly which locations to check for the cave. I've highlighted my progress in the, the lower right corner. Ability is not yet recharged. Stop. It is not ready yet. I am returning to town. The dungeons I fear the most are those where I don't know the map pattern, uh, and that is the case with Eastern Channel, which is one of the next dungeons coming up. For most dungeons you'll see in this run, I know exactly what I'm doing, but for this dungeon, I don't. And here we are. So, you might notice that I'm running into a lot of dead ends now. Because I have absolutely no clue what I'm doing. I've checked this in my recording, and if I had found the right way in the first attempt, I would have saved about 15 seconds. Which is why I really want to know what the map pattern is, but I've run through this dungeon so many times now, and the only thing I've noticed is that the exit seems to be some distance away from the entrance. I have a map guide on speedrun.com, and if I ever find a pattern, I'll update that.
I must wait to use that ability. Oh. I can't imagine why my young crucible. They are I am starving. That ability. The two dungeons you need to find in Desolate Sands are quite different. Um, I find that this one is way easier to navigate and somewhat takes the same amount of time to complete from run to run. If you know how to handle the map loop, of course. That ability is not yet recharged. I hate this dungeon. <laughs> I keep confusing the tiles, I always seem to get stuck in dead ends, and I hate how much level 2 can differ. And ironically, it actually went close to perfect this time. So this was essentially a perfect desolate sense. Even the waypoint was in a great location, so I could have saved a second if I had used that to return to desolate sense, but, well, since I didn't know that, I didn't dare to gamble and use the cave exit instead. Act 2 is more or less done at this point. The only places left where I can lose time is in Realm of Shadow, uh, and while saving the refugees. Realm of Shadow can be a problem for classes without any abilities to jump over a wall, uh, as there can be some nasty dead ends, uh, but there are rarely any problems as Monk. This one even went really well. So now I just need to save the refugees, and as a monk I sometimes have the problem that I accidentally pass some refugees too fast, uh, which means that they won't follow me, and I usually notice that when I stand and wait forever at the sewers. Um, it also happens quite often that the game bugs out a bit and continues to show the markers, uh, which doesn't help when you need to backtrack. In this run I try to add a small break when I'm close to a refugee uh, to avoid leaving them behind, but if I stay too long, I end up losing time instead, so it's a balance you need to find. It is not ready yet. If you look at the minimap, you can spot a buggy refugee marker, as I mentioned. That ability is not yet recharged. The second phase of the Belial fight was one of my favorites when I first played the campaign, almost a decade ago. It's sadly a bit boring as a speedrun. Skycrown Battlements is so much more fun to go through with the speedrun build. If you like to play as a monk, you really should try the build just once for the feeling, even if you don't want speedrun. And we are at the catapults, and this is probably the most boring part of the entire campaign in my opinion. In a speedrun this is essentially just an auto-scroller. There's not a lot of stuff to do. Once you set off the first catapult after this event, you just need to wait and make sure that none of the guards raising the catapults die. If they die, you risk softlogging, but oddly enough that still haven't happened to me. <laughs> I think I've had all other possible and impossible softlocks you can have, but 
the catapult softlock, which seems to be one of the more common softlocks, has still not happened. And I avoid your softlock more easily if you leave any enemies close to the guards, but even when I do that, nothing bad has happened, so I guess I'll run out of luck here or something. I'm comparing my splits to a run I got the day before this run, so I never got around to upload it. At this point in the run, it uh, might seem like I'm way ahead, but that's actually a bit misleading. Uh, the reason is that in my previous run, I had an excellent Act 5, and that act is just so random, so 20 seconds can easily be lost or gained. It's kind of funny that because of speedrunning, people expect me to be great at all aspects of Diablo, so I sometimes get questions like which class is currently the strongest or what's wrong with my build, and I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> I can tell you everything you want to know about speedrunning, but other than that, I'm a very casual gamer. I mostly just play this game now to speedrun. Finally. So, now the interesting parts of Act 3 can begin, and right off the bat, I'm fooled by the layout of Keep Depths Level 1, so that's a time loss of about 5 seconds. That ability is not yet recharged. It is not ready yet. And a bit of bad luck here at the beginning of level 2. As mentioned earlier, whenever there's a closed door you can't jump over the walls, so that's why I had to go all the way around. Level 2 can actually be very short, but this one is definitely not. That ability is not yet recharged. Here there are only two possible ways to the exit and I chose the wrong one first. This was definitely not my best key depths ever. I must wait to use that ability. That ability is not yet recharged. It is not ready yet. Perfect locations for the ballista. There are only two truly random areas left in Act 3 now, and that's area crater level 1 and 2. Both of them can be run killers, though I think level 1 is usually a bit worse. Uh, when it comes to the layout of those maps, I divide them into 1 tiles, 2 tiles and 3 tiles. Um, I'll explain in just a moment what that means once level 1 is done. Alright, so that was a 2 tiler. And what that means is that there are 2 tiles between the entrance and the exit, and that's not including any dead ends you might run into. Uh, 1 tilers are the best, obviously, uh, and 3 tilers are the worst. Uh, there's not anything you can do if you get a free tiler. It's uh, just a way for me to explain how lucky the game decided you should be. The tiles are huge in area creator, so it takes some practice to notice during a run what uh, type of layout you got. It is not ready yet. I can feel the blood. So close now. So close. I must wait to use that ability. That was a two-tiler as well, uh, with a small detour into a dead end. The dead ends in Narrowed Crater are usually shaped like a donut, so they're quite easy to recognize. 
You might not have noticed it, but I have actually been a bit careful whenever I've approached the exit in the tower levels. As a monk, it's possible to pass the exit with a dash uh, and end up back up on the higher plateau, which is extremely easy to do, but it's not that easy to dash down again. So that's a time loss you want to avoid. This was quite a mediocre act 3, I think. Fills of Slaughter was really great, but I got two toilets in Ariad Crater and Keep Depths was way below average, so if I can get a better act 3 in future runs, beating this run should be very possible. That ability is not yet recharged. If you want to start speedrunning Diablo 3, then this act is a great place to start. You only need to learn 4 maps and then you're able to run an entire act and I would say that only Silver Spire level 2 can be a bit difficult. A short summary while we wait for the first boss fights to be over is that in Gardens of Hope you need to find 2 Hell Rifts and there are only 4 possible locations in the first tier and 7 possible locations in the second tier. So you just need to memorize and check those locations. Um, Silver Spire level 1 is yet another map with a loop and level 2 is where the layout can vary a bit so that's the greatest risk of a time loss. There are two different layers of the second tier, and this one is my least favorite. It feels a bit slower, but I'll admit I haven't actually checked uh, that with a timer. It is not ready yet. This is also a place where you can risk losing some seconds. Tyrael doesn't always want to talk with you immediately, but it went great this time. Meh, a bit of bad luck. I took the long way in the loop. We have a lot of time now until we reach Act 5, so let's talk about Shrines. If you have seen some of my other runs, you might have noticed that unlike those, I haven't picked up any Shrines in this run, and that's because I'm playing as a monk. Uh, picking up a Shrine takes a bit of your time, so you need to make it worth the effort. Uh, there's only one Shrine I've thought about using as monk, uh, and that's Frenzied Shrines, um, as they make your attack speed go up, uh, and that's what this build needs to go fast. Unfortunately, the effect is too great, so they drain my resources too fast for me to use them. Um, Empowered Shrines and Fleeting Stride could also make it a bit easier and more comfortable to play this build, but they are a luxury and not a necessity, so I'm skipping those two. I would really like to be able to skip this cutscene in solar runs, but I haven't found a way yet. It is not ready yet. Defend the church! Repel these files. Most speedrunners hate Act 5 because it is filled with large maps where you don't really get the same benefit of knowing the map patterns well uh, compared to the other acts. Uh, Westmarch Commons coming up next is actually one of the better maps. Um, you first need to pass two loops in it, 
and if you're lucky, the game will then show the exit's location with a yellow arrow soon after. That ability is not yet recharged. I'm out of the first loop. It is not ready yet. I'm out of the second loop. And there's the exit arrow. I stumbled a bit in the first loop where I was actually going in the right direction, but then I decided to turn around and go the other way. The reason is that based on the hundreds of run I've had through the years, it seems like some tiles and patterns are repeated more often. So that's why I thought it was shorter to backtrack and go the other way around, but I was wrong this time. Miriam could do a soft, soft lock here, uh, where you can't talk to her. If that happens, it's about 10 second time loss. Ability is not yet recharged. As I've said earlier, the Act 5 I'm comparing against was really great, so I'm actually a bit stressed here. Uh, when I did this run, the world record was 38 minutes and 17 seconds by Han Yu. So if I wanted to beat that, I had to be 14 seconds or more ahead compared to my splits. So far in this run, Westmarch Commons and Westmarch Heights were good, but Briathon Cemetery was very bad. <laughs> and as a result, I've lost 7 seconds at this point. The next part of the run is what I call the Adria segment, and it's the worst part of Act 5 in my opinion. Uh, the first thing you need to do is find the right passage to Corvus entrance. And I'm 6 seconds behind the world record, so I'm contemplating right now whether I should gamble uh, and just go for the first entrance I see, even though it might be the wrong one. Uh, if I play it safe, I need to find two guide stones instead, which will reveal the right entrance. I decide to play it safe for two reasons. First. I should be able to win some time later in the run, uh, as my previous Pandemonium level 1 was unusually bad. Uh, and second, I'm still ahead of my personal best, so there's no reason to throw a good run by gambling. This was definitely one of the better passes the round I've had, but I was actually a bit at this point, because if I had gambled and just chosen the first passage I saw, I would have saved more than 10 seconds, so that was a tiny bit annoying. Those two Corvus levels were <laughs> basically the reason why I ended with a sub-38 for this run. They were amazing. I can't put it any other way. There are only three big maps left at this point, and Battlefields of Eternity is the only one I fear. A pandemonium level 1 can act up every now and then, but it's usually alright. Battlefields however, can be terrible. <laughs> I'm 30 seconds ahead, uh, so I'm quite sure at this point that it's going to be a personal best, but I can still lose the world record uh, in that map. It is not ready yet. I slowed down a bit there on purpose. Uh, I've tried to pass Imperius so fast that he didn't say his line and the game wouldn't progress, so I always slow down now before passing him. Ability. 
There are two siege runes we need to find in Battlefields of Eternity, uh, where one is somewhere in the middle of the map and the other is found in an event somewhere on the border. Uh, but it's kind of ironic that even when you know this, the map is very difficult because of its size um, and it's impossible to get a reliable time here. And that is what we call a very cooperating battlefield. This was very close to perfect. You can get a better battlefield uh, when you, in very rare cases, are able to see the locations of both siege rooms uh, from the entrance, but I'm not complaining about the layout I just got. At some point in the future, I'll try to beat this one, and I'm going to hate these splits. I've been so lucky with both the Adria segment and Battlefields uh, that I doubt I'll ever be that lucky again in the same run. In the next map, the uh, route of thumb is to go east, uh, if you can, but sometimes that will lead you to an event instead of the exit. Uh, and if that happens, you need to backtrack until you get to a three-way or four-way tile and go in another direction from there. Uh, this exact scenario actually happens to me in this run. Um, but since I'm so familiar with the tiles in Pandemonium, it only cost me about 3 to 4 seconds. Pandemonium level 2 is very easy if you follow two rules. Uh, rule number 1 is to always head south, and rule number 2 is that if you can't go south, go west instead. You always find the death gates as fast as possible this way, and then it's just map luck determining how fast that will be. That was the event which cost me a few seconds. It is not ready yet. And here we have level 2. I must wait to use that ability. Go west. And south. Can feel the strength of your and west again. Have made it possible for you to and south. And there are the death gates. That ability is not yet recharged. It is not ready yet. Maltiel really wants to delay this fight by talking, uh, which is why I scroll like a madman to make him stop. The time is coming up when I talk to Tyrael. And time. I am very happy with this run, uh, which is also a milestone in Diablo 3 speedrunning, as it is the first sub-38 in an any percent solo run. Uh, right here at the end I show my build, so you can copy it if you want to give speedrunning a chance, uh, or if you want to try to beat the Sprinter Conquest of course. You should be aware that the build is quite demanding, uh, as it needs uh, lots of attack speed uh, and also resource cost reduction and cooldown reduction uh, to work properly. It's also quite difficult to play, so if you find yourself in trouble you can try to cut down on attack speed, uh, as that will make it a bit slower, but also easier to play. So, I hope you enjoyed this commentary. And if you want to know more about speedrunning Diablo 3, you can check some of my guide videos on my channel or check the guides on speedrun.com. Take care and thanks for watching.